Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. As an alternative to the uh, idea of keeping to the script which I've been requested, I thought I'd try speaking quickly, see how we get on. <laughs> we heard Sir Alan Waters talk to us about the subject of money. I'm here to talk about an equally important subject, other people's money, or more particularly other people's debts. I want to start my talk by posing a question for you. What's the similarity between the late Robert Maxwell and our European partners? <laughs> the answer, quite simply, is in their attitude to pensions. <laughs> in Britain, we've behaved prudently. Large sums of money, some 600 billion pounds, according to recent estimates, have been invested in company and private pension funds. This money represents capital which has been put aside or saved so that the incomes are available for our future pensioners. People who pay money into company schemes or private pension plans are secure and confident in the knowledge the funds will be there when they retire, unless, of course, it's the Mirror Group Fund. <laughs> Even the previously nationalized industries, British Telecom, British Gas, the electricity companies, have vast pension funds with the intention of making sure funds are available when their staff retire. Contrast this with the position on the continent. In most continental countries, little money has been set aside to provide for future pensions. The capital has not been created to ensure those pensions will be available for the pensioners of the future. All EU governments use the public pension contributions of today's workers to pay the pensions of those who've already retired. In the same way, pension contributions made by those who've already retired were used to pay previous obligations. While the UK is well placed to honor its debts to its pensioners, our continental partners are living beyond their means. Raiding the contributions made by their workers for future pensions in order to pay off past debts. It's for this reason that the continental countries can be said to have adopted the Maxwell approach just use the money paid by the workers for their future pensions to pay off all your debts. This problem of little money being put aside on the continent is compounded by the generosity of the pensions these countries promise to pay and by the fact that their populations are aging more rapidly than ours in the UK, increasing the burden which must be carried by the population currently at work. Between now and the middle of the next century, the number of people working in these countries will drop in relation to the number of pensioners. So less working people will have to support more pensioners. You may recall that Benjamin Franklin said that only two things were certain in life, death and taxes. It wouldn't have made such a catchy phrase, but in fact, demographics are also pretty predictable. We can forecast what our population will be decades ahead. In Italy, in 1950, there were more than eight people of working age to support each pensioner. Today, there are between four and five. By the middle of the next century, there'll be less than two people of working age to support each pensioner, two instead of eight. As you can see, I believe a picture's worth a thousand words, probably worth about 10,000 of my words, but they're out. Because of this gap between money received from those who are working and the money owed to those who have retired, most of our European partners are developing huge liabilities for which no money's been set aside. Now, estimating the size of these liabilities is certainly complex. But a recent piece of research published just last month by the OECD in Paris shows the effect of current policies on the public finances of some EU countries could be devastating. Using the approach of the OECD figures, employed in a recent study by the senior economist of international bankers Merrill Lynch, you find that for the period to 2070, the average liability for a person in the UK in today's money for these future pension liabilities it's just a little over 1,000 pounds. In contrast, the average liability per capita for the other countries in the EU combined is about 26,000 pounds. Now, if honest accounting policies are adopted, such as those that companies are required to follow, government debt on the continent would be vastly higher than it's currently officially stated. These governments have simply not taken into account the debts they owe to pensioners, despite my view that these are the most solemn 
debts that must be honest in any society. But this hidden debt is not mentioned. The graph shows how much greater the government debt of our main EU partners would be if they were to include these pension liabilities in addition to their official debt as defined under the Maastricht Treaty. There can be little doubt we will be asked by Brussels to, quote, harmonise this indebtedness. Well, not harmonise means in that context. In other words, the debt will be spread across all countries. When speaking to the European Parliament in 1995, Jack Delors, the former president of the European Commission himself, said, and I quote, Economic and monetary union means, for instance, that the European Union recognises the debts of all countries in EMU. Now that could cost the UK some £1.2 trillion. Pounds. Now when I wrote this I was a bit confused about what a trillion meant. That, for the avoidance of doubt, is £1,200 billion. Pounds. That's quite a lot in anyone's money really, isn't it? Whichever currency we denominate it in, even in the lira. if this potential debt were divided on the basis of the population of each European country. Let me explain that figure was reached. It the total unfunded debt of the member states for which figures are available would be as much as 7.88 trillion pounds. Now the UK accounts for about 16% of the total population of these countries. So if we were forced to take on a share of this unfunded pension liability of these countries, on the basis of our share of the population, we would be liable for 16% of 7.88 trillion pounds, the huge sum of 1.28 trillion pounds. By deducting the UK's own unfunded liabilities, we have some, but much lower, 60 billion pounds from this figure. It's clear that the additional burden for the UK as a single currency could be as much as the figure that I gave you earlier, 1.22 trillion pounds. Now, the other way of looking at it, because I had difficulty in my mind of what 1.22 trillion pounds means to us, is to say, how much do we have to pay each? That's nearly 21,000 pounds, actually it's 20,808 pounds for those of us, for every man, woman, and child in the UK. That's a staggering figure. It's impossible to uh, conceive how we could fund such a debt. Even if we were not to enter the single currency, Mechanisms already exist which would allow these debts to be shared between EU countries, with the UK picking up some of the bill for this continental profligacy. The community budget could be modified, for example, so as to assist areas with, quote, demographic imbalances. I can almost hear now that it will be argued the UK has received an unfair competitive advantage in labour market terms by paying low state pensions. Labour costs down will be penalised because we have been now paying ourselves such a low amount. There will be rules for, quotes the level playing field, which could lead to this high emissions UK. I've given you a lot of complex figures there about this hidden debt which threatens us all. So I'd like to end with a very simple analogy to explain the threat to you. Let us assume, which I hope is correct, that you've all been prudent and saved for your retirement. I certainly haven't. I've made no provision whatsoever. I have spent every penny of my income as I've received it. And as uh, retirement looms, I know that I'll face a crisis. So I've got a simple proposition for you. Why don't we share your savings? Now, if any of you think well, the uh, proposition which I've just put forward is fair, I'd like to meet each time I would be <laughs> delighted to point. If, however, you don't, you just learned a very valuable lesson in saving for your old age Euro style. Thank you. <laughs>